The airline industry has been lobbying quietly but aggressively for a cost saving and life threatening move that could cut co-pilots out of flights entirely, leaving passengers with just one pilot on each flight. Now, the industry wants to amend what's known as Part 121 of the Federal Aviation Regulations, which requires air carriers to have two pilots in the cockpit, and for good reason. And I'll give you examples for why it's a good reason to have two pilots in just a moment. But the reason why they're doing this is because, of course, they want to maximize their profits, (laughs) number one. And they're trying to mitigate the high fuel, the high cost of fuel, but also the ongoing pilot shortage, which they could solve by, you know, treating their pilots a lot better. But nonetheless, there is language in a new bill now introduced in Congress, the Federal Aviation Administration Reauthorization Bill. Asking the Federal Aviation Administration to reconsider Part 121 and to allow the use of a single pilot operation. But don't worry, guys, first they'll, they'll do this in cargo aircraft, okay? Uh, meaning they're gonna try to ease their way into this so they don't get too much backlash from the public. But understand the ultimate goal is to cut the number of pilots from two to one. And that will be a disaster. And it's not just the United States, because the airline industry, of course, is international. And I'm really sad to find that there are legislative proposals in other places. More than 40 countries have appealed to an international aviation agency to revise standards globally to give airlines the option for a one person cockpit crew. So the flight is just, so the fight is just getting started. And again, it's really, really important to have more than one pilot because there have been incidents where the main pilot is incapacitated and the co-pilot needs to take charge. In fact, there was a situation less than two weeks ago in a flight, an American Eagle flight. The co-pilot had to make an emergency call after the main pilot was incapacitated. And here's how that went down. Captain is incapacitated. Did you have any information I need to pass along to the tower in terms of uh, paramedics, gate number, any of that? I know gate number and he's knocked out. We're gonna need paramedics uh, working on everything right now. Okay, thank you. From like 2 Center, clear to land and just advise if you need any assistance. Uh, clear to land, 2 Center, um, and uh, we'll exit. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna have to move the captain from the seat, get to the gate. Are we really having a conversation about this? Yeah, of course I mean, we are. This is so mental. Of course. So imagine that there is no co-pilot in that scenario. Is the flight attendant supposed to get in there and go, okay, the pilot's been incapacitated. How the hell do I land this thing? Okay, are we supposed to say, hey, is there a doctor on the plane? Is there a pilot on the plane? <laughs> this is mental. This is like going from late stage capitalism to something else. I don't know what to call it, killer capitalism, something like that where I mean, we told you this before, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh are on the Supreme Court because they said corporations can basically kill their employees and get away with it. And so in this case, they're like, well, maybe there's three or five or 800 people on a plane, but we'd like to cut costs. And by the way, it happens all the time. I mean, look at what happened in Texas. They cut costs on their energy grid, and then it turns out, oops, there was a cold patch and people froze to death. But hey, they cut costs, you're dead, but they cut costs and saved a lot of money. By the way, it happens here in California too, with PG&E not burying the, uh, their lines. And so it falls, it creates fires, people die, right? But PG&E didn't wanna cut their costs and they'd already bribed all the Democrats in California and the energy folks in Texas had bribed the Republicans. So, and so will they let them get away with this? Yes, I'd be shocked if they didn't. And at some point you will see a story, you know, two, five, seven years from now, where we will play a clip from this episode and then tell you about a one person run plane where the pilot passed out and everybody on board died. But in the meanwhile, all the airlines will have saved tons of money. And keep in mind, I mean, airlines love to make themselves out to be victims of what happened during the pandemic. Oh My God, we lost everything, I mean, we're really struggling, except, Since the pandemic, they're now making profits again in the second quarter of this year. They made $2.2 billion in profits alone, profits, okay? So that's after all the operating costs, after all the salaries, $2.2 billion in in profits. 
Now, their pre-tax operating income was $4.7 billion. By the way, the, I'm a business person. The correct number is the $4.7 billion. Yeah. So that, that's a ton, of course you pay taxes on your profits. So that's a ton of profit to make, but nope. It's never enough. Mm -hmm. The green machine has to be fed. Uh, cut the pilots, cut the flight attendants, oh, charge for the state space above you, the space below you, the space next to you. Charge, 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 squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Remember, this is the industry that created the quote unquote misery index, where the more, yes. more miserable you are, the more they can charge you things to make you unmiserable. Less miserable, so, yeah. Right? So, so hey. they literally create situations to make you miserable. So they could charge you to not be miserable. It's what, th that's this industry. One of the things that they've started doing increasingly is you have to pay extra to be able to pick your seat on the flight. And it's really important that you're able to do that, not only because you wanna have the ability to pick a, a seat that you're more comfortable in, but because they purposely overbook the flights. So if you don't have an assigned seat, the possibility of you getting kicked off that flight that you've paid for, uh, increases significantly, right? So that there's all sorts of tricks and disgusting gimmicks that these uh, airlines are, are engaging in. I also want to note, though, uh, we bailed out the airline industry to the tune of 54 billion dollars through various stimul stimulus packages. So if they're whining and crying about the pandemic, just keep in mind that they got quite a bit of assistance from the federal government. And then internationally speaking, uh, profits have been pretty good. Okay, so let me give you the details on that. Let's go to graphic five here. The International Air Transport Association expects a net profit of 4.7 billion for the industry next year, with more than more than four billion passengers set to fly. It had previously said only that profits were within reach in 2023. So they're noticing that business is going real well. People are traveling, uh, fears about the pandemic have pretty much subsided. Uh, so they're bragging about their profits while simultaneously lobbying internationally to uh, cut labor costs by minimizing the number of pilots on these flights. It is a disaster, but this is how it works. This is how the model works, right? Profits over people's lives. We've seen it happen over and over again. Why would we think for a second that the airline industry would be any different? Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.